Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Tutor and welcome to a new series that is Learn From Sight. In this video I will discuss about the information or the ideas that you have to know about the beam, about its reinforcement or its uh, concreting phase, its form work that will be very important for a site engineer. So starting with the minimum size of rebars. Okay. So these are the main bars of a beam and the minimum size should be 12 mm okay you cannot use a bar size less than 12 nowadays and coming back to another point is that at least four number of bars should be provided throughout the length okay let me show you here so in this case we have used four number of bars and that passes throughout the length so throughout the length as you can see here the minimum four bars are required to hold this steer up also so you cannot use less than four number of bar here we have used six bars this is according to the load and design so it is a different case but minimum four number of bars should be used and that should pass throughout the length the third point is the rebar of the longer side should rest over the rebar of shorter side so this is the longer side of the structure or you can see the building and the rebar of the longer side if you see this is the rebar of the longer side now it should rest over the rebar of the shorter side so these are the rebar of shorter side so as you can see you can compare with the two sides so this is the rebar of shorter side let me show you here clearly okay now it is clear uh, yeah you can see here the rebar of the longer side is resting over the rebar of the shorter side so this is a case you have to understand uh, this should be valid for both that is the top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement okay that is the top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement of longer side should rest over the reinforcement of the shorter side respectively now talking about development length which is here we are taking 65 it may be different okay we have a general formula i'll discuss that later on this bend portion okay the stretch and then the l shape is the development length provided in the beam this is provided in order to transfer the stress and the five being the diameter of the bar used so you can see here so from this point okay to the length that is required as 65 is taken as the development length and it is provided in order to transfer the stress from steel to the concrete in this case also you can see from the point of column beam intersection it is known as a development length then we have minimum cover for beam it should be provided as 25 mm which is nearly one inch and the desoltering time is that uh, the former can be removed uh, the side leaf sorters can be removed after 24 hours of concreting now let's discuss about the lapping of rebars in beam maximum size of rebars is 12 meter you can see in this video also so this is the maximum length available but the length of the section may be greater than 12 meter okay as you can see here it is 38 meters so it is not possible to use a single rebar so we have to lap it in different section so the bars has to be lapped. Lapping is simply joining two bars with providing certain length so that there is a transfer of stress from one bar to another bar. That is the lapping length. So lapping length is equal to mathematically phi sigma s by 4 tau bd where phi is the diameter of bar, sigma s is the stress and tau bd being the design bone stress. Generally it is taken as 55 to 65 on the field depending upon the grade of concrete and grade of steel and in case of beam the lapping for the top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement has to be done at different section now for bottom reinforcement you can see here bottom bar should be lapped at the corner face of beam within 0.25 l distance from face of column alternately so if we consider this as a plan okay then ld being 65 this is the column Okay, and from the face of column within 0.25 L, L being the center to center distance between the two column. So here you can see the bottom bars are being lapped at this section that is from the face of the column within 0.25 L. And make sure that the middle bar is not being lapped here, only the corner bars that is alternately bar are being lapped. And in this case, if you see here, the middle bar is being lapped but the corner bar are not being lapped at this section so this is the point you have to understand that the word means here alternately if you are lapping the 
middle bar then you cannot lap the corner bars and if you are lapping the corner bar you cannot lap the middle bar before lapping of bottom bars at corner about 20 to 10 to 20 centimeter spacing has to be provided okay you can see here from the face of the column this spacing is provided for easier workability and easier estimation of steel. Now a quick revision of the lapping of bottom bar. As you can see here, the middle bar is being lapped. Then for the corner bar, it will be lapped at the other section. So you can see in this section, it will be lapped. Now let us move to the other section then. So here you can see the corners bar are being lapped, but the middle bar is not being lapped in this section because it has been lapped at the previous section. Before discussing about the lapping in the top reinforcement, we should have the idea about the bar that has been lapped in the bottom reinforcement for a particular section. That is, for example, if we have lapped the middle bar in the bottom reinforcement for a particular section, then the middle bar for the same section in the top reinforcement cannot be lapped. That is, if the bottom bar has been lapped with the middle bar, then the corner bar has to be lapped at that section for the top reinforcement. So let's discuss about the top reinforcement okay let me show you the section i'll make it clear about the point that i have just discussed so the top reinforcement has to be lapped at the mid section uh, so this is the mid distance between the two column so here you can see that the corners bar has been lapped for the top reinforcement and the middle bar has then been lapped then according to the point that i have discussed for the bottom reinforcement the middle bar has to be lapped as you can see here the middle bar has been lapped but the corners bar are not been lapped for the bottom reinforcement this is the point that you have to make sure before lapping for the top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement at a particular section so here you can see that alternately the bar has been lapped for the top reinforcement also so here you can see the corner bar is been lapped at a section then for the middle bar the other section has to be lapped making sure that the bottom reinforcement has been lapped alternately with respect to the top reinforcement.